Hi, I'm Tony Williams, and this is Brooklyn Savvy. Hi, I'm Tony Williams, and this is Brooklyn Savvy. We are delighted to have two phenomenal women as our guests today. We have Audrey Smoltz and we have Gail Marquis. Now, uh, our audience will find out just how marvelous you are, but there's another aspect of your story that we're going to be sharing too, which is the fact that both of you are married. So, so I'm to each other. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I need to, to each other. other. That's what I need to say. But before started. Let me introduce our savvy panel. We have Ellen Saul, Peter, Hi. Colette Ellis, and Denise Arbasu. So, Audrey, tell us a little bit about you, because you're a public person. You're very recognizable. And, and why is that? I've been in fashion my entire life, and now at a certain age, a hip age, I like to say, I've well, been in beautiful. business. Thank you. Yes. I've been in business for 35 years. And my business is called The Ground Crew. Mm -hmm. And I got that name from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who talked about the ground crew in his acceptance speech when he received the Nobel Peace Prize back mm -hmm. in 1964. So we're the ground crew. We are a backstage management company of fashion shows, mm -hmm. fashion shoots, and fashion videos for 35 years. Wow. It's amazing. So I started in uh, 1977, and mm. now it's 35 years, and it's yeah. just exciting. And before that, I was with the Ebony Fashion Fair. Mm -hmm. I was the uh, commentator and producer for the Ebony Fashion Fairs, and we traveled all over the world. And I got to meet all the fabulous designers. Oh, and wow. before that, I was yeah. with Lane Bryant. So I've always been in fashion. And many years ago, when I very first got started, it was at the Ophelia DeVore School of Charm <laughs> as a model. Yes. Well, we can see that. We can That's see a that. long that time ago. But right. so I've been in fashion a long time. Great. Now, Gail, you have a wonderful story. Now, I don't want to steal your thunder, but you are an Olympic champion. That's right. Once yeah. an Olympian, always an Olympic That's champion. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm an Olympic champion. I have an a, a extensive sports background. I played uh, basketball professionally here in the States. I played for our national teams mm -hmm. internationally. Uh, I've been professional in Europe as well. And I just coupled that with the financial world, another competitive venue. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to a little bit com I, competition. You, you know that, Denise, right? <laughs> I know that well. So that's why I took it into competition. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I've been doing the financial world the last 25 years, but I still do a lot around broadcast color commentating for sports. I do some emceeing, always doing professional public mm -hmm. speaking. So, so Gil, what was your medal? What, what, what were you meddling in? I yeah. like to tell people gymnastics. <laughs> But nobody believes me. They usually <laughs> laugh when they see a six-foot frame, but really right. it was basketball. Uh -huh. It was the first time they had women's basketball at the Olympic Games. So we and met them, we that? brought home. Where was that? It was in, in, it was in your my hometown. City. Yeah, Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. 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 But, but you know what is so compelling and courageous, to my way of thinking about the both of you, is that you all decided to exchange vows. So Audrey, you know, for the longest, for, for a period of time, you were, had other relationships with men. Yeah. How, how, when did you, how did this all happen? How did this happen? I know it's a loaded question, but how did it oh. happen that uh, you f married mm -hmm. and f fell in love and married Gail? Well, you know, we are all on a journey. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. a part of my journey. Mm -hmm. So at 61 years old, mm -hmm. and I don't mm -hmm. mind saying, I met this fabulous woman Mm -hmm. sitting next to me named Gail. But I was not looking for a relationship. And this journey happened, and she called me. And the next thing you know, she said she wanted to take me out on a date. And I said, well, what kind of date is that? And she mm -hmm. said, I'm a lesbian, I'm gay. And I didn't think anything of that. Mm -hmm. I said, fine. Mm -hmm. And then she said, then I said to her, well, who's paying for this? She said, well, I'm going to take you out for dinner. I'm going to pay for everything. I should have known then, right? <laughs> So I hadn't been on a date with a woman that somebody's paying for everything. I said, right. wow, yeah. I'll take her <laughs> up on that, point. and I did. <laughs> and we just started talking, and it was just so easy talking to her. 
I had no idea that I was going to fall in love with this fabulous woman. Mm -hmm. And I like to tell the story. I really wasn't looking for a BMW, but I say that. <laughs> Black man working. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. right. So what happened was a BWW who showed up in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was taking a course. Uh, it's a seminar. We were, taking, we were taking yeah. course. Yeah, we were I'm taking, land, land, okay, landmark yeah, education. Yes. So I was in one particular seminar, and she was in another seminar, and the two seminars came together on a particular Sunday mm -hmm. to exchange. Mm -hmm. I forgot. You probably remember the name of that seminar. I was in a seminar. Feeling good or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it kind of the two classes got together, the human communication side along with your ILP. Introduction. Oh, right. introduction. I used to, I used to, to yes. leaders. Yes. I used to do the yeah. introduction. So that's to how the two course. classes got right. to, mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So how did that? Did, did Landmark bring together, or was that just the time and place, or was it what you were learning through Landmark that brought you well, together? You know, the the way Landmark also worked, it was it was a class that's coaching you to kind of come out of your shell, mm -hmm. communicate. Uh, if you were hidden, if things were stopping you, things that you didn't mm -hmm. even know were stopping right, you. Right, right. That was the whole pretest. So you could start to live the life you love, live it powerfully, uh, live it comfortably, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so just the fact that our two classes got together and were able to have the gumption enough to say, I'd like to, you want to go out? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. that's, and that's where it just started. Right, you have said that? No, I wouldn't. Oh, that's so so in the, the analogy, which is interesting, you know, landmark, at least when I took it, they talk about being on the court mm -hmm. and being right. actually, mm -hmm. so right. it's, it's ironic game, being, being active, an Olympian right. basketball player <laughs> uh -huh. that you actually went on the court. And I had to push myself to get out there. Right, as opposed to being in the stands, right. which is the concept that's of right. living back and looking back and sort of right. waiting to take the action. Mm -hmm. But did so. it feel like it was a natural flow? I mean, it sounds like you started it as friends and it just, yeah. you fell in love. I mean, it was something that happened. But but typically, don't you identify? You know, th this is this is what it, it is so interesting about it. It's kind of like you sound like you're a free spirit. Meaning, yeah, you know, yeah. I see myself uh -huh. as a, yeah, a, fr a straight woman, know. and that's what I'm gonna be. You know, but you. But is that a were, label? Is that a label? No, I mean, I'm just wondering. You sound like a total free spirit. I'm admiring this. I really this am here. a free spirit. <laughs> yeah. And I had to call my shrink at the time. He's mm. he is um, a medical. He's a psychiatrist, yeah. not a therapist. Mm -hmm. right. And we had been together for 11 years. And then when this happened, I said to him, I called him on the phone. I said, doctor, his name is Lonnie, mm -hmm. what's going on? And that's when he said, Audrey, you're on your journey. And I said, but look, I have spoken wow. to you. You know everything about me, every detail mm -hmm. for 11 years. Mm -hmm. I have told wow. you everything. Mm -hmm. And now... Here it is, May, and I just met this fabulous person, mm -hmm. and it's a woman, and you what? I must have told you so. He said, no. Mm -hmm. So when I say, say wow. I was on a journey, and I was ready, what happened, as soon as I fell in love with Gail, which was almost immediately, mm -hmm. wow, I just was open. Mm -hmm. You know, you come out of that yeah. box. We were all in a box that I mm -hmm. And I wasn't looking for... A romance at the mm -hmm. time, whether mm -hmm. male or female, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was doing very well, and and a friend of mine said, "Oh, you need romance." I said, "No, I'm fine. I'm doing well. <laughs> you know, it's okay <laughs> to be without a mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. because, I, you know, some women always have to have somebody exactly. near them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't attitude. that kind right. of person. Right. Mm -hmm. But Gail <laughs> showed up, and Gail is really a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tonight when I came here. I mean, she opens the door for you. Very she similar. helps you out yes. to the car. She makes certain everything. <laughs> Everyone should have a Gail. It's unbelievable how good she is and Thank how you. nice she is and how kind she is. How quiet so, she is. are you a diva? She's a gentle mm -hmm. giant. How did you deal with what people say? Mm -hmm. Well, I really didn't care. You know, right. I was right. a, right. you know I what? I, when you're at a certain age, mm -hmm. I understand young people mm -hmm. who are in their teens and in their 20s, they have to worry about what their parents, mm -hmm. their friends, their cousins. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. hmm. It mm -hmm. mattered. Well, I had to tell my daughter. I have a stepdaughter. Nieces, my nephews, everyone was, oh, how nice you're happy. Mm -hmm. They were happy for me. Mm -hmm. And so I just went out, I just told everybody, but here's the fun part. My hairdresser at the time said to me, Audrey, you have taken the juice out of gossip. 
The ladies sit in my chair and they cannot even discuss you anymore. <laughs> you have told everybody <laughs> that you're in love with a woman and you are just so, just so happy. They can't they even talk it. about, yeah. can you imagine? They it. He said, they really, you really took the juice out of gossip, That's so that so was funny. it. That's but so it, funny. You know, it's a little contrary because Audrey was very brand new to the the lesbian lifestyle, whereas I had grown up through it. Mm -hmm. And if you're growing up through it in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, it's always like, keep it keep it low, keep it to yourself. Right, it was right, very clandestine. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to when Audrey pops out in 1999 <laughs> when we meet <laughs> and tells the world. Yeah, I, it was exciting. I'm but still, that's advocacy in a lot of but ways. But I'm still, mm -hmm. it might be advocacy, but I'm still coming from, oh, I have to push have to myself out there. I, I right, really right. need to, to tell my brothers and sisters, mm. my cousins, families, friends. So your brothers and sisters were not aware they of your- They were aware, but it wasn't as overt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't uh -huh. as overt as calling it? her her stepdaughter in Chicago, guess what? No. I'm in love with a woman. No, no, it was not like that for me to call my <laughs> brothers and sisters. My parents were already passed. Mm -hmm. But to call brothers and sisters and friends, mm -hmm. gay friends were easy. Right. It's, right. it's the other friends, meeting the straight right. friends, right. meeting the cousins yes. who are straight, who I'm very close to, or family members. Mm -hmm. uh, I had three aunts at the time who, on my father's side, his three sisters, who were very civil rights and you know that's not something you do mm -hmm. and very much against but it is a civil right it is a it civil is right so interesting yes. this is 13 years later you're saying mm -hmm. this in mm -hmm. end of 1999 right. right right it was not i mean they're talking about still walking on picket lines right. and mm -hmm. mississippi yeah. and those those civil rights are different from these civil rights right. so right. that was according a conversation to according to them mm -hmm. so as out there and boisterous and tell the world right. who Audrey was, right. I'm still easing into it. It was enough for me just to. And I can understand that. I can certainly understand that. Yeah, it was enough for me just to speak to her and because you were living through it. I lived through it for many decades where it just wasn't accepted. And you know, marriage, church. How did you? Because you know, the African American community is very much. You know where we are. So I have always, I've yeah. always been go church going and God fearing. I think oh, you yeah. asked your minister. I about asked it. my pastor, Reverend Sue J, mm -hmm. and I said, "I'm in love with a woman." And the first thing she says to me, Audrey, does she know God? And I said, "Yeah." She said, "Fine." Right. Wow. Uh, wow. Fine. Yeah. And so then very uh -huh. accepting. But that's interesting. Do you think it made a difference that she is a pastor? Yeah, and a woman yeah. married us. Uh, Reverend Mariah Britton mm -hmm. married us. We mm -hmm. had female pastors. So they were all excited. Mm -hmm. You think it was different? That's why I was right. thinking. She was I think she. so. Well, maybe so. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right. Mm -hmm. Maybe so, because I didn't have a male pastor at the time. Because mm -hmm. even today, we were just talking yeah. about the clergy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Male, right. male clergy. I won't even say yeah. black, white, or whatever, but just right. male clergy itself not being uh, responsive, not, not embracing mm -hmm. the gay and lesbian lifestyle, and not embracing this marriage situation mm -hmm. at all. So right. often we It's will, a big issue in church right now. It's a big right issue, now. and it right. really doesn't mm -hmm. need well, to be. Well, in all churches, but I mean, that's part of their belief. You know, they believe that there's heterosexual, that that's what marriage is defined as. Now, I think marriage is open to all. I mean, we're all the same, right? Everybody wants the same thing. It's all Everybody about wants, love. Exactly. I always, love. Religion I've always to me is about love. love, so it mm -hmm. doesn't... And I'm so like happy, labels. and people can see that yeah. I'm different, you mm, know, right, right. who You're know me. They say, oh, my God, Audrey's so happy. And now, if I go somewhere and Gail's not with me, where's Gail? Mm. Well, where's Gail? Mm -hmm. Well, where's yes. everyone, all my straight friends, they want to know. Mm. So where's Gail? <laughs> Even right. the Republicans. One of the Republicans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a bridal shower, too. Oh, oh yes. yes. And it took her about 10 years, but right. yes, oh, she approved. Really? A bridal shower? Yes. Oh, bridal she shower. gave us a marriage for 10 years? No, no we were just married, kidding. but yeah, it took know, 10 years for her to find And then she, she, she gave us a toast. Okay. I see. Well, you know what? Right. She gave us a toast. She said, you know, right. I really didn't believe in this. And Audrey told me about it. And, wow. But well, now the, I'm open. It took her, it gave her courage, courage. to even say that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think courage is where we're going to pick up right after this 